Thank you all for joining MTDC and C today. I'm with my friend Adam, and we're gonna focus today on automation. Now, we're standing in front of a turning center, and lucky for you, my buddy Adam has been a machinist for over eight years focused on turning centers. So, we get to know the differences between hand loading and unloading, programming the machines like he was doing versus the automation cell that you see behind us and the benefits. Now, we talk about automation a lot when it comes to the labor shortage, when it comes to the need to keep things running all the time, the average uptime of a machine being 40%. We want to get to 80%, 90% if we can. But I'm going to let Adam do that kind of talking because Adam is the man here at Akuma. Adam, over eight years as a machinist, coming into Akuma, working on the turning centers, now with automation. Where do you see the value in A, turning centers, and B, adding automation to them? Well, turning centers can obviously do things much faster than manually cutting things, you know. But also, the robot the robot cell is just so much quicker. The robot's not going to take breaks. There's not much downtime to it. All you got to do is load the back of the pallet and it's ready to roll. As a machinist, Adam, there's a misconception out there that often gets brought up. And I know I've said this a lot on our channel, but it's important, I think, to reiterate is some people, when they see a robot and they see this video and they look at us talking, we'll go, that robot's going to take my job. But that's not the case. What it's doing is remo removing the dull, dirty, dangerous, allowing us to get back to our creativity. And because we are all searching for more people in the industry anyway, it's really just allowing companies to do more work. And the people out there shouldn't be afraid of losing their job. Jobs, right 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 and, you know it opens up more time for you to do other things like focusing on programming dialing things in dialing cycle times in you know it opens up a lot of doors that's how you know he's a machinist is because he's dialing the programs in Adam that's absolutely correct now I also think about as you mentioned that the ability when people go well what happens when we add an automated cell and I'm not the one loading and unloading? What am I going to do with my time? How am I going to continue to increase my profitability for myself? Sometimes we're selfish people, right? And like you said, we get to do more. We can dial in the machines. And ultimately, if we're doing more and the machines are doing more and the company is doing more, yeah. we're all becoming successful. Would you see that the same way as a machinist as well? Oh, yeah, I would. Absolutely. So, when it comes to setting up something like this cell, it's obviously not taking breaks. We call them cigarette breaks. We call it bathroom breaks, all that. But at the same time, when we're setting up this cell, how complicated or not complicated would you think something like this would be for a customer who's out there right now going, well, this is my first automated cell. I saw Adam on camera. He seemed like a trustworthy guy, and I believe him, so I'm going to buy one of those. How easy is it to set up, and does Akuma help them bring it into their facility? Oh, yeah. You know, it's extremely simple to set up. This LB2500 comes out the box, ready to be connected to the, uh, to the robot. And the robot, you know, is very simple to set up. You can run anything from half inch to five inch parts. There's a bunch of different template sizes, and it's just super simple to set up. You said half inch to five inch, which leads me to the next bit. How flexible is something like this? We obviously see a whole bunch of bar stock there, yeah. but if I want to switch from one job, is it pretty adjustable for high mix, low volume? Oh yeah, oh yeah. And we can switch over into that pretty quickly as well? Yes. So by investing in one of these machines, we're not saying I have to have a 10,000 part job in order to buy one of these. I can have just 100 part jobs, 50 part jobs, 1,000 part jobs, whatever that mix and match might be. Right. It's pretty easy to switch over into the next piece. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And the reliable uh, reliability, I should say, of Akuma I mean, we already know the parts coming off are going to be good based on the precision and accuracy of Akuma as well, right? Absolutely. So, as I'm looking at this setup, it looks like it's a Fanuc robot here, most likely some shunk grippers, I would believe. You have a lot of partnerships at Akuma. Is there anyone else that's helped you out with the programming of this, of the cutting tools of this? Any, any partners you'd like to give a shout out to on camera? We'd we'll like to give a shout out to Iscar. Most of the tools inside on the turret are Iscar. Oh, perfect. And the, uh, the Chuck is Kitagawa. Perfect. So between automation, between turning, we're all trying to upgrade our machine shops. We're trying to do more with less. We're trying to become more profitable. And with the massive reshoring that we have going on right now because of the last few years and the lead times, this is why we invest in automation. This is why we invest in Adam. And this is why we talk about it here at Akuma. So if you can hear all the noise around me right now, yes. That's how excited people are to be at Akuma today, and that's the excitement of the manufacturing industry as well. Adam, thank you so much for joining me on camera. I do appreciate it. Thank I'll be you. back in 10 minutes. We'll do it again on another subject, all right? <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't want to do that. <laughs>